All right, so here's my idea. I'm gonna create a little dummy surface to project this on and we'll just see how that works. So whatever, we'll do a whole Dynamesh thing here. So first I've got to make it a Polymesh 3D and we will Dynamesh it. Default resolution here is fine. I'm going to duplicate it, Dynamesh it. So now we get that as one piece and I'll do a mirror and weld on it. And then Dynamesh that, and we'll do a little bit of a polish. And then whatever, we'll stretch it out. So this will be my, my random surface that I'm trying to project on. Make sure we've got, I'm probably gonna turn it off, uh, the symmetry, but just to make sure my modifications here are symmetrical. Okay, I'm gonna tap X. So we've got this geometry here in our previous demo. So I'm gonna turn perspective off. I'm gonna make sure I'm looking down from the right angle. And our total poly count after, like I deleted the back, so it's just about as cheap as it can be. And I'm gonna make it a little bit wider too. We'll do something like that, maybe. Uh, so poly count on this is going to be, yeah, like 10,000 tries, which is eh, probably not too bad. And we're going to go to, I'm going to expand this little side menu here. And we'll go to the brush menu. And I'm going to go to create and create insert mesh. We'll say new. And then hop over to our new insert mesh brush and back over to our sub tool with our spheres here. So by default, this insert mesh brush, obviously we're gonna probably need to modify the depth and whatever else we could take a look at it. This is gonna be what we get without messing with it at all. But what I wanna do, obviously I wanna embed it a little bit, but it needs to conform to this surface, the thing that I'm projecting it onto. These crevices here might be a little bit too much for it. We'll find out in a second. But what you can do here in the modifiers of the brush menu with the brush selected is you can turn on projection strength. Now what projection strength is going to do is it's going to look at the curvature of the surface that you're applying your insert multi mesh or insert mesh brush to and try to match it. So it's going to run a lot slower when you apply. And I may need to actually pull this thing out of the surface a little bit, which is probably, yeah. So let me tweak my embed a little bit. And we'll go ahead and draw it on. And it's gonna be very slow because it is doing a lot of calculations. I guess I'm, oh, I clearly my embed value modification there didn't work. But anyway, you can see it's like kind of working. We're getting a few little artifacts in there. If this was a probably a simpler surface, uh, let me just, let's just try a, a regular old sphere here. We don't need to hang on to that. And the number of uh, polygons that you are, let me actually just adjust this value, that you're projecting to is going to be as much of a factor, there we go, as the density of the brush. So when you can see the brush is actually dense enough that it's picking up the faceting on our source mesh, which obviously we don't want. So we'll just go ahead and do a quick Dynamesh and a polish on this. And when I apply it again, it's a little slower because there's more geometry that we're calculating in our projection. But, you know, imagine if this was like a piece of like shoulder armor or something, it would be pretty challenging to sculpt this or to, to model it. But now that it's in this state, it's actually a separate piece of geometry. So I can, you know, uh, we can do a split uh, on mass parts. And now this is something that I can continue to work on if I want, uh, change these values, do whatever, you know, like add more more detail with a live boolean or, or or whatever. And in fact, I can use this as a live boolean surface probably. It's hollow, so it might not work that great. Well, let me 
me zoom out a little bit. So there's something kind of weird going on with the, the hollowness of it. But, oh, I, I guess I'm just punching. I Honestly, I don't really know what's going on there. I think because it is hollow. So if you're going to use it as an insert mesh brush, you probably are going to want to make sure that you've got a back on it. Because you might get something like this. But if I made this a Boolean, you can, you can always just... That, like this is now kind of considered one thing where I to generate my line boolean and my, my uh, boolean mesh from this. So anyway, that's a, I think a really powerful feature. Like if you, if there's something that you want to append some, some fairly high detail thing that you'd like to uh, uh, make work on a piece of geo, the only challenge is like just making sure that you start, you start your stroke like in the exact right way, but very, very powerful feature. And uh, well, I wonder why that didn't work. Oh, it's because I'm I'm matching this curvature here. So if I select this guy, now it'll it'll work a lot better. It'd probably go a lot slower too. Yeah, there we are. So this uh, this projection uh, strength is is a really powerful feature and and very useful, and will work with any insert mesh brush. So if you're you know you've got one, let's say one that you downloaded, I don't know whatever, find one that's relatively cheap and easy. Uh, I don't know legs like if you give it projection strength it'll it well it should do the same thing you can kind of see what's going on there i think my my uh yeah my embed value is just really high there but it'll it'll conform to the surface so yeah projection strength really cool tool